So distillation column, no, they are used widely in chemical industry. Now every chemical engineer thinks of distillation first, okay, uh, before he uh, thinks about any other separation because it's a very clean and neat separation based on the volatilities of the components. We don't need any external substance in it, so process is very compact and cost effective. So of course, cost effective. It all depends on uh, what is the difficulty of separation. It, of course, as you know, like it uh, exploits the difference in volatilities of the components. I would say about. 80 to 90 percent uh, separations in industry are done with the help of distillation, like especially petrochemical industry, refineries. If you go, like it's all the distillation, there's no other separation being used in refinery. So it's a very important uh, unit operation in chemical industry, and um, uh, that's why. Like, and of course, like most of the distillations are performed in continuous mode, uh, where like you have a feed going continuously to the column, you're removing uh, products continuously uh, because the capacities are huge or large, and that's the reason we need to study uh, distillation in continuous mode as part of this particular lab. So in this experiment, uh, you are going to uh, study uh, multi-component distillation. Uh, this is the experiment in which students will get an opportunity to uh, do experiment in continuous mode, observe the result, results at steady state. And uh, uh, the idea is like this, like you will give you a mixture, it can be a binary mixture, it can be a uh, multi-component mixture, mostly it will be a ternary mixture. Uh, it will be either ideal or it will be. It is possibly that an, an, a non-ideal mixture. So uh, what student is or a group is supposed to do is uh, uh, for a given mixture and given field composition, uh, they are supposed to uh, do some calculations uh, and get a required purity at the top and bottom. Uh, so the calculation will involve uh, determination of minimum reflux ratio. Uh, it, and there are other parameters like say you may have to adjust the reboiler duty, you have to decide where the feed should go to the distillation column and so many things. So these calculations will involve uh, determination of these parameters. There can be multiple sets of parameters which can give you the required purity and we are going to tell you like what is the purity required. Okay? Uh, and based on that, like uh, you, uh, you operate a column. So in the next part is part two. You will do distillation uh, as per the required parameters, like and then operate it based on the parameters that you have calculated, and uh, see whether you are getting the required purity or not. Okay. The calculation may involve simulation using Aspen. Okay. So you will get an exposure to uh, a steady state simulator that is Aspen. Uh, where uh, you are uh, doing a virtual experiment on a simulator and uh, uh, see whether you are getting the required purity or not. So if your results match well with the um, uh, simulation results, the experimental results are matching well with the simulation results, then fine. But otherwise if they don't match, then you have to explain why they are not matching. The analysis that you will be performing of the samples uh, uh, will be with the help of gas chromatography and this gas chromatography is an instrument where uh, you have a column in which there is adsorbent uh, over which the sample is uh, uh, passed of course with the help of a carrier gas and depending on the affinity of the components to the, um, to the adsorbent like one component will move ahead, one component will uh, lag behind and you get a separation and based on the peaks that you observe like you um, quantify okay, uh, uh, how much is the composition of a particular component in the given mixture. So you get an exposure to a very useful and versatile method of gas chromatography which is used in the uh, chemical industry for analysis of chemical samples.